them, uh, but I'm going to answer this article so you can know the truth of it. You might want to take notes, and you can take this to work with you, or you can take this tape and put it out to whoever you want to. And we do plan on also writing this article in the McDowell News, because I don't want the devil to use that to hurt on their big day. Um, all right, you ready? Here we go. Let's hurry now, because we've got uh, a lot of things to do tonight. And I'm going to have to hurry to get to all of this. I'll never get to all of it, I'm sure. But it brings up several Bible verses here that if we took time to study them all, it would take all night. Genesis 50 said in verse 20, Genesis 50, 20. Now, we've got some extra ones here, so whoever wants one, raise your hand. Got some extra ones. Look at Genesis 50, 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Every time God's people was persecuted in the Bible, God always meant it for good, and they wound up growing and being blessed. That's why stuff like this don't bother me. Some of you new people that ain't been coming here long, you get all shook up over something like this. There's no reason to at all. None at all. God always blesses our church, and we get a bunch more people get saved. Something great must be coming up in March and in April. It always happens that way. Don't, no doubt in my mind. Now, as far as the UFOs themselves, which is unidentified, you right? Anybody else want these? Uh, there's some back yonder with their hands raised. Somebody grab them and run them to them. If you want them last ones, I'll raise your hand. As far as uh, unidentified flying object, the question, and I'm, I ain't going to do my presentation tonight. I'm going to save that for a later date. I, I could say that like this. Do you believe the cops beat Rodney King? Does anybody in here not believe that Rodney King didn't get beat up? Why do you believe Rodney King got beat up? You say, well, Brother Danny, I saw him and they had a videotape of Listen, there's 17 people videoed UFOs flying over Mexico City at one time on home video cameras. 17 at once. I got three hours probably of video. Home videotape, a lot of it, which I'll be showing here in this church. The question isn't, do they exist? The question is, what am they? And that's where the argument begins. There's no question about them being there. There's no question. I'm a proof. I will show it to y'all and show it in front of face. And anybody who wants to come see it, that's why this article didn't bother me a bit. These are amateur Bibles. They just absolutely have no idea what they're talking about. They're so far behind time, it ain't even funny. But we're living in 1997, people. You better get with what's going on. And I'm going to show you it from the Bible tonight. The question is not, are there unidentified flying objects? Yes, sir, absolutely positive, which we'll show you on the videos. And, and also from the Scripture. All right, his first charge is, Reverend Castle says, that first verse, that UFOs were, let's see where I got it underlined, created by Satan. To my knowledge, I made no such statement at the meeting. I never said UFOs were, quote, created by by Satan. I said, whatever they are and are being done, the devil is using them and will use them to deceive the nation, to bring the world to set the stage ready for the Antichrist. That's what I said. Uh, the paper put it created, used the word create. And then this fellow goes into a big long thing about this being in direct contradiction to the Word of God because the devil can't create nothing, the devil can't do nothing. But I'm going to show you what the Bible says here this evening. Even if I had have said he created it, it wouldn't have been a bad statement. If I had have said that, which as far as, I'm, as far as my knowledge, my recollection goes, I did not. What they don't realize is, and I'm not going to have you turn to all these, but I am going to have you turn to some. Pharaoh's ministers over in Exodus 7, 11, took their rods and made their rods turn into snakes. True or not true? Amen. This fellow says, you don't have to turn to these now. There's too many of them. Exodus 7, 21, Pharaoh's false ma magicians, empowered by the devil, turned the water to blood. Amen. Don't tell me the devil can't work miracles. Don't tell me he can't. Or create and if you want to use this in the sense of creation, not not the, the the devil can't imitate the divine act of creation from something from nothing to something. He couldn't reproduce the lie, the lies there in the book of Exodus. But the devil does have miracle working power. You better believe it. Second um, Thessalonians chapter two. Let's all turn to that one. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and look at verse number nine. As in the New Testament, this is the Antichrist when he comes. And he sits on the throne, claiming himself to be God. 
Notice I did not say the devil can create something out of nothing. I didn't say the devil created anything. The devil has power and will have power to work miracles to deceive the nations. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 8. And then shall that wicked, capital W, that's the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. Here we go, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Antichrist will have power to do signs and wonders. And with all deceivableness, he'll deceive the nations of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Uh, they didn't get saved when they had a chance. That they might be saved. Listen to me. The devil has power to, he'll call down fire from heaven. He'll make lights in the sky and call out like a ball of fire in the sky. And the devil does have and will have power to do that. I'll tell you something that's mighty weird. I'll tell you something that's mighty weird. The denominations that are always hung up on signs and wonders usually don't like to admit that the devil can do signs and wonders. That's the truth, buddy. If you've ever heard it right there. Amen. So the devil can do it. There's no doubt about it. And I'll show you another one on that in just a minute. Keep going here. Keep going down there. The next thing I got underlined where it said he purposely, I purposely distorted the truth to prove a lie, skip that. You can believe whatever you want to about that. Believe whatever you want to. If you believe I just lied, help yourself. I'm not even going to answer that attack. The Lord didn't answer when they attacked him, and I'm not either. All right? The next one down there where he says, Reverend Castle's assertion that the beings which inhabit UFOs come from hell, quote, which is supposedly a quote from me, is all co also contradictory to God's holy word. Hell is a place of everlasting torment and punishment. It has been created for the devil and his angels for those who tragically reject the gospel of Jesus Christ found in Revelation 20, 10 to 10, uh, 20. Satan does not have the power, nor does any other being outside of God's will, to release anything from hell. I didn't say that Satan had power to release things from hell. I said things come out of hell on this earth. You want to read it in the Bible? Open your Bible. Open your Bible to the book of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. We'll see if anything can come out of hell. Revelation chapter 13. The Antichrist comes out of, this, uh, out of the sea, which represents the masses of people. There is also the beast in the book of Revelation, during the tribulation. There is also the false prophet. And that's why people get so tore up over articles like this, because they spend more time with a boob tube than watching, reading the Bible anyway. They have no idea what the Bible teaches on these issues. Revelation chapter 13, the Antichrist is on earth. A beast in the book of Revelation represents a king or a kingdom, or a man representing a kingdom. And the Bible said this. Look at verse 11. Revelation 13, 11. Everybody looking at it? Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. See that? Coming out of the earth. It is a known fact. Hold your finger there. I ain't through. It's a known fact that during the tribulation, there are creatures come out of the earth. This guy keeps saying here over and over and over, Brother Latham does, that I'm seeing these ETs, these extraterrestrials. I don't even believe in extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrial means they're coming from outer space. They ain't nothing coming from outer space. But the Bible has always taught there's something coming up from down there. It always has taught that. I don't know why anybody get upset over that. It's right in the Bible. Let's read it again. Verse 11. If you've got the right Bible, of course, ain't no telling what Bible some people may have. A beast coming out of the earth. You say, well, Brother Danny, that might mean he just... Well, you can say what you think it might mean. I'm going to tell you what it says. It says out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now look back there in verse 4, and you'll see the devil worship. That's why these rock and roll singers worship the devil now. And they worship the dragon. That's the devil that gave power unto the beast. Lord, in mercy. That is why devil worship is so popular right now. It's getting ready for the great tribulation. Now, verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power. Looking at it. 
of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwelleth therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now hold your place. He's trying to get the false prophet is trying to get the world to worship the Antichrist. Do you know how he's going to get the masses of people to worship the devil and the Christ? Verse number 13. And he doeth what? Great wonders, miracles, so that he maketh what? Fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Whoa. Wow, what a verse. He said during the tribulation, the false prophet's going to get out there and he's going to say, All right, ladies and gentlemen, got all the cameras turned on me. Everybody's watching my satellite. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. And something fire is going to come down out of heaven onto the earth. I'm not going to speculate on what that is. I'm not going to say it's UFO. I don't know. But I know he's going to call it down just like the Bible says. And you know what the purpose of it is? To deceive the nations. To deceive the nations. I know there are cases all over the world where after UFOs have landed, there's burnt places on the ground. And I know there's been ships after they've been around them that the furniture and the rails on the ship are so hot you can't touch them after they've been in their presence. That's documented uh, cases in history. And we'll talk more about that when I do a presentation. Now look at here. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. See, people are going to be deceived into worshiping the devil. How? By means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image unto the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. The Antichrist is wounded during the tribulation. He had a wound to the head and then he's alive to, to duplicate the resurrection of Christ, to imitate him, to deceive the world. You understand that? And oh boy, oh boy, my brother in the article sure missed this next verse. Look at that next verse. There's one he missed bad. And he, that's the devil, the antichrist, the false prophet, had power to give what? Let's read it again. And he had power to give what? Life under the image of the beast. So it boils down to, do you believe the Bible or do you not believe the Bible? I believe the Antichrist will have power to give life to the image of the beast. You say the devil can't give life. He most certainly will. Right there it says he will. Sure will. Sure will. And that just proves you one thing. Everybody that comes down the road talking about signs and wonders and miracles, man can do signs, wonders, and miracles, that don't mean he's of God. That don't mean he's of God. Especially in the last days. Especially in the last days. All right? Now, let's move on here just a little bit. Um, we, we find out that um, the devil will worship, cause people to worship, uh, the Antichrist calls people to worship the devil. The beast comes out of the earth. How does the beast come out of the earth? Because this bottomless pit opens up and he comes out of it. We'll show you that here in just a second. The bottomless pit opens, which is what we know as the bottomless pit pictured as hell. Hell is the center of the earth. Hell is not the lake of fire. After the judgment, hell will be cast into the lake of fire. That's what the Bible says. So the pit does open up, and the beast does come up out of the earth. I didn't say they were ETs. I ain't even never seen a UFO. I've never seen one. But I still believe Rodney King got beat up. I've seen it on video. Man could say, oh, that wasn't really him in that video. Maybe it wasn't. Man could say, oh, well, they just faked that. And the police went out and they just grabbed some money. Well, maybe they did. But I believe he got beat up. I just personally believe that. And that's just one video. I got ten times more than that. Now, we need a good fight once in a while. You know that? It'll rally the troops. Persecution brings us together. Amen. All right, the next charge. This is a wild one. He flips out over this one. First, he says, another attack on me. He said, I've confused television with the National Enquirer, which I didn't get my information from television or the National Enquirer, which, of course, that is not true. That's a lie. Then he says he quotes the sixth chapter of Genesis to support his belief that these extraterrestrials, wrong creatures, have already conceived a race of giants. I did not say extraterrestrials have conceived a race of giants. Christian theologians have consistently identified these sons of God not fallen as the offspring of Seth, a righteous man. All right, we don't have a lot of time, but let's go to Genesis 6 here tonight. 
Let's go, let's see. Let's see who these uh, sons of God here who came into the daughters of men here in Genesis chapter 6. I've been meaning to preach on this a long time anyway. It's a good time just to give you a little introduction on it. Amen. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter number 6. Now what, they refer, what I was referring to here is that before the flood, and by the way, this is why God drowned the world the last time. This why, right before the flood came, picture the last days, before the wrath of God falls in this earth. The flood is a picture of the great tribulation. Right before the tribulation and during it, the Bible said this. God saw the wickedness of man was great and all that. Verse 1, look at Genesis 6, 1. And it came to pass when men, men, regular men, began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, quote, verse 2, the sons of God saw the daughters of who? Men, that they were fair, and they, the sons of God, of course, took them wives of all which they chose. Now the question is, who or what are these characters called, quote, the sons of God. Here in the article, Brother Latham says that they have consistently been identified as the offspring of Seth. So he changes the Bible from the word God to Seth. He said they are the sons of Seth instead of the sons of God. The Schofield Bible does that too. If you've got a, a Schofield reference Bible, it says the uniform Hebrew and Christian interpretation has been that this marks the breakdown of the godly line of Seth and the ungodly line of Cain, which is a bunch of bull. I'll show you that in just a minute. I think Schofield's a great Bible. i got one laying right here. Your notes are just wrong on that, on that point right there. It don't say sons of Seth. It says sons of God. All right? Saying that sons of Seth is private interpretation and a man has no business saying the Bible says something that it don't say. Care who he is. What it is, the implications are so mind-boggling that the theologians have shied away from what the Bible says about this issue. Now, let's look at it here. Uh, their offspring were giants. The Lord said, that's it. My spirit is not always going to strive on man. I'm going to wipe him out in 120 years. And notice why he read this. Look at verse number 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Uh-oh. For that he is what? Also flesh. That's a weird thing to put in there. My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he is also flesh. Well, what's the other thing? Yet his days shall be 120 years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, and men of renown. And God had to wipe the nations out. Now, what they're saying is, what the brother's saying in the article is, is that the sons of God were the, daughter, men, daughter, uh, the sons of Seth, and the daughters of men were these daughters of these wicked people. And these godly sons of Seth saw these ungodly daughters of these other men and married them. And giants were their offspring. What I'm saying is, what the Bible says, let's get a little Bible study on this sons of God, okay? Alright, point number one. Listen, point number one. Nobody in the Old Testament is called a son of God except Adam. Nobody. A son of God is a direct creation of God. Seth was not a son of God. Seth wasn't created in God's image. Seth was in Adam's image after he fell. That's in Genesis chapter 5. God made man in his own image. Adam's the only man that ever was in God's image till Jesus Christ showed up. Amen? Somebody said, we're all created in God's image. Wait, they ain't none of us been created. We is all born. There's only one man created, and the rest of us born, got born to get here. All men are created equal. Read your Bible more and, and watch TV less. You won't say stupid things like that. Look at here. Adam was the son of God. God said, I make Adam in my image. What happened to Adam? He sinned. When he sinned, he lost the image of God. And they had to wait all the way through the Old Testament for a Redeemer to come. John chapter 1 verse 12 said, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. A son of God is an act of creation by God Almighty, and we're a son of God in the New Testament when we get born again, not before, not before. 
So nobody in the Old Testament was a, quote, son of God. Show me somebody it was. There's a verse in Isaiah that said God was going to have sons and daughters, but that's a prophecy verse referring to the nation of Israel, not as an individual man being called a son of God. Adam lost the image of God when he sinned. The second observation. The sons of God were here before Adam and Eve showed up. Turn to Job 38. Job 38. Here's a verse that says that the sons of God were here shouting for joy before Adam and Eve was ever created. Job 38. So whoever these sons of God were, they were not normal human beings like you and I. How come when they chose them women, they made giants instead of regular people? When a godly man and an ungodly woman have a baby, are they a giant? Job 38. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38, verse 7. This is a whole scripture here on creation. Way before Adam and Eve. God has done the lightning. God laid the foundation of the earth. Verse 6. God made the foundation of the earth and fashioned and laid the cornerstone thereof. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. There you go. All right. If it was Seth, number four, why did they produce giants and bring on the judgment of God? You mean to tell me that the only godly people were men and all the ungodly people were women? That sounds about right. Uh, but, but that's not the way it was really in the Bible. It's a pretty good interpretation to me, amen. But that, really that's not right. You mean to tell me that you... Let me. By the way, can I say something here? Schofield Bible is spreading this around. A lot of preachers believe it. There ain't no such thing as a godly line. There is no such thing in the Old Testament as a godly line. You say, that's it. No, there's not. There's a messianic line, but it's as ungodly as you can get. There ain't nothing godly about the messianic line. There is no godly line. Do you, would you like me to tell you who's in that godly line? Judah. The fornicator, Rahab, the harlot, Bathsheba. Um, that was number five. The godly line of Seth is not godly, it's ungodly. And number six, he made the charge that, see down there at the bottom where it says Mark 12, 25, that angels do not marry or reproduce. He does that by twisting the word of God where it said the angels of God in heaven. Them's not fallen angels. Them's not demon spirits. The angels of God in heaven don't marry and ain't given in marriage. See how you got to pay attention to what the Bible says? Jesus said they neither marry or given in marriage, but I as the angels of God in heaven. That was not even a verse on any kind of fallen creatures who followed the devil out of his rebellion. And the Bible does say that when Satan rebelled, a third of the angels fell with him. What happened to them? They were reserved in the chains and everlasting darkness. They roam the earth as demon spirits and sometimes the pit opens and they come out in the Bible. Sure do. Sure do. If anybody don't believe the brief interpretation I just gave you of Genesis 6, you tell me after church what 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 11... Let's see, where is that verse in 1 Corinthians 11? 1 Corinthians 11.10 means when it said a woman should be careful when she's praying and they're worshiping and should always keep her head covered because of the angels. Tell me what that verse means, buddy. I'm open. I'm open-minded. Tell me what it means. If angels... and oh, oh, by the way, let me read this article here. Let me read this. See right up here on this part? Let's see. Although it is clear that no one can say for certain who these scripts were the origin of these men, they most certainly were human beings because Jesus Christ states angels do not marry or reproduce. And uh, let's see, there's another place in there, I believe. And most of them write that angels are sexless. Not in my Bible they ain't sexless. Every angel in that Bible is portrayed as a male, a young man. You want some proof? Read Genesis 19 when you go home. When those angels come to Sodom, those men in Sodom were lusting after them. And you read the book of Jude where it said they were left. The angels which kept not their first estate, which were fell down here, and they were going after strange flesh. 
See, the devil wanted to mess up that seed. The devil wanted to mess up the seed. He knew that God promised a Redeemer. So what he done? He takes, he takes spirit. I don't know how they do it. I don't claim to know. Somehow they'll take a body. Somehow they'll get intermingling in. Somebody messes around with stuff. They did take women. They did produce in the Old Testament. They did make a race of giants. And they've always done that to try to mess up the seed to keep the Messiah from showing up. God kept that messianic line away from it. And the Messiah did come. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And that's why these things are interested in blood. That's why they're interested in reproduction. To produce a race ready for the tribulation. We'll show you that later, but I'm just answering an article right now. Now, quickly, he sums it up by saying this, and I'm going to say another thing or two, and I'm going to be through. In closing, Reverend Castle's comments about Roswell, Area 51, the Bermuda Triangle, Green Haze, and cattle mutations. They don't even know what the word's about. That ain't cattle mutations, it's cattle mutilations. <laughs> that's, that's about dumb, our cattle mutations. And I'll tell you what the cattle mutilations are. And the Antichrist probably stepping out of UFO are in a word garbage and are not worthy to be discussed in the light of the truth of the Scripture. And I want to tell you, brother, I'll, show, I'll prove to you and I'll prove to anybody in this town that what I said about Roswell and Area 51 is not garbage. It's truth. And it exists. We had a fellow stand up there at the meeting that night who has been to Area 51, right outside, over, over the mountains from Las Vegas, there in Nevada, desert, there is an area called Area 51. It, don't look for it on the map. It ain't there. The government won't even allow, uh, admit that it exists. But it's there. I'm going to show you video of it. I've got, got video of a fellow who used to work there who can back up his story with documented evidence. And brother, it is there and it is happening. And there was a man stood up up there the other night and said, I've been there and watched the lights move around like this coming out of that place. It's there. I'll prove it to you. It is not garbage. What I said about the, uh, the Bermuda Triangle and the Green Haze ain't garbage. How many of y'all know that Columbus saw a UFO when he's coming in on his trip to America? It's in his diary. He saw a light come down and go underneath the water. And you know where he was when he saw that? It's recorded in Columbus' diary. I'll give you the quotes on it. You see, people ought to be careful before they go spouting off. Do you think I'm going to stick my neck out on something that's controversial if I don't know what I'm talking about? I've done my homework, man, and I'm going to tell you, Columbus spotted one. He said we saw strange lights going in the water. There wasn't no electricity back then, people. There wasn't no airplanes then. And he was sailing right into San Salvador in the Bermuda Triangle when he wrote that in his diary. Going underwater. They ain't coming from Mars. Now they'll probably bring something back from Mars and say it come from there. Since they're going to land on Mars on Independence Day, 1997, that's a scheduled date for the, them to land. 50th anniversary of the Roswell incident, just by accident, I reckon. And he said, What does need to be said that Reverend Castle with his UFO theory? has fulfilled the word of God, which said I'll be, you know, false prophet, and I'm a false prophet, and bringing heresy. Well, let me tell you about cattle mutilations. There are thousands, thousands, I'm going to show you pictures of them, thousands, tens of thousands, not just in America, all over this world. Don't look for it on the news, they keep it off. Of cattle who are laying out in the pastures, and they find them in the mornings. Have you ever heard of the cattle mutilation phenomenon? Raise your hand. Okay. We got some people in here is doing a little studying. They're all over. You talk to ranchers. I go to Texas, man, and I go out there and I talk to them and I ask them, and they find them in the fields with surgical cuts on their face, eyeball removed, tongue removed, reproductive organs gone, and all their blood is gone, and there's no footprints, not a step in the mud, and there's surgical cuts made on those cows' jaws and bones. And the only way they said you could do it was laser surgery. Doctors have examined them and said it can't be done in no other way except laser surgery. I got bunches of video and pictures of them. Now you tell me, who's got laser equipment out in the middle of Kansas in a 2,000 acre field at 2 o'clock in the morning? Tell me, man. I mean, tell me. I'm open-minded. I never have been one of these people just believed anything. 
But I'll tell you, when a person says something from Kansas and draws a picture of what they've seen, an old farm woman, and then a person in, in Argentina drives, draws the very same picture, and these people have never seen each other, and it happens over and over and over, I mean, sooner or later, you've got to wise up, buddy. Something's out there. Something's out there. These people don't know each other. These people are high officials. They are government pilots. They are government workers. They are high airline pilots. Documented. I'm going to show you some pictures of cows that they said there is no way they could do it. He said, well, I said about the Great Pyramid. Did you know? I'll show you this in a few weeks, Lord willing. Did you know that they now show that we couldn't build the Great Pyramid now, let alone 5,000 years ago? That's any builder. They say when a, bu a building that big, there's enough block in the, in the Great Pyramid to build something like 35 Empire State buildings. <laughs> and they say it can't be done. There it is. They say a big building will settle six inches a year. That's what contractors say. Will settle six inches in a year. It's been there supposedly 5,000 years. Settle less than one quarter of an inch. How'd they move them big stones? Some of them weighing many, 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 many tons. You say, what are you saying? I ain't saying nothing. I'm just saying, where'd them doggone things come from? <laughs> I, I'm going to show you something. You won't believe it. They said we couldn't do it with today's technology. Pointing true north. Exact. Did you know if you lay out all the world, they lay out all the world, and all the world was flat, then Great Pyramid's right smack in the middle of all the land mass of the world. In Egypt. We'll get into that later, but Make a long story short, that's basically answering all that. What I said about Area 51, Bermuda Triangle, all that, ain't garbage. Ain't garbage. I don't claim to have all the answers, but it ain't garbage. Now, let me close by saying this. This will help us because, I mean, I get criticized all the time. Don't bother me. I was up our life and about it the other day, and somebody else said, somebody, uh, one of the boys said, did you know somebody else said something bad about you, the brother Danny? They said, there ain't no way they'd come to our church because you pushed their daddy down playing basketball back in high school. <laughs> and won't come now. I said, well, tell whoever it is. I don't know who it is, but tell them, good night, you're not going to get pushed down playing basketball. Come up here and play with us. I'll let you push me down if you want to make you feel better. I always did have a problem beating up them boy, defeat people. Somebody else said, there's no way that they go to our church because I, I hit their rock with a cousin when they were six years old. Hit their rock with a cousin. I hit their cousin with a rock when I was six years old. Six year old and I hit him with a rock. See, I was a mean little booger when I was little. Throwed rocks at people, pushed people down. I'm glad I got saved. Let me tell you what happened the other day. This happened the other day. I was out, out there at a Chinese place eating with two preachers. Thursday, Thursday this happened. I, somebody wouldn't come because I hit them with a rock when I was six years old. Somebody wouldn't come because I pushed them down. I, see, you know what that is. I mean, you're just nuts, man. Nuts. Guy walked up to me out there at Chinese place Thursday, walked right up to me and said this. I was with two preachers. They brought a preacher up here who was having a marriage problem. They, brought, they come like that all the time. They come like that all the time. I got one coming tomorrow from way down south Georgia. He heard about me. He said, I need to talk to that man. He's coming up to spend a few days. I said, man, you better be ready to go because i got a lot to do this week. He said, I just want to hang around with him. He may be here with me Wednesday. Having a real bad marriage problem. He just wants to hang around with me and get some advice. People look at me and they say, well, if he can make it, I can make it. If that's what God wants to do with me in my life, praise God. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Amen. People scum, throw away, scag like me to help other people. Praise God. That's all right with me. And the guy walked up to me out there and he said, just right up to me and he said, I heard you had a Mercedes. That's what he said. I mean, he got right close to me. You got a Mercedes? I said, what? He said, you got a Mercedes now, right? I said, no. I ain't got no Mercedes. I said, I ain't even got a car. <laughs> I ain't. I sold my system pastor stole it. I ain't even got a car right now. I said, I'm driving my wife's Volkswagen. It's sitting out there right now. And he said, oh. Can you imagine the gall that somebody's got to have? Can you imagine walking up to somebody and heard you got a Mercedes? One girl up town said, Danny, what do y'all do down there? I said, we get down there and we drink their blood. And Sarah said, no, I, didn't. I was just kidding with her. 
Um, I told him, I said, uh, I don't have a car right now. I've been borrowing people's. You know, uh, Miss Newton let me drive her big thing with Jig down yonder this weekend. Boy, I enjoyed that. And I drove Brother John Rose Ford Explorer. And I drove, man, I, I got to thinking, I'm kind of liking this like you. I don't believe I want no car. I got to thinking, I can go around through everybody in the whole church, and it'll take me about a year, and then I'll start all over again and just drive everybody's car. That's a blessing. I'm on that Lexus that's right out there next this, this coming weekend. Got to go to West Virginia week after next. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pick me one out. She's got a Mercedes over there parked somewhere. But that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. It's good for you. That'll make us fight, boy. That'll make us rally together. Amen. I'm going to toughen you up a little bit. Get you in a place where God can bless you. Amen. Can I get a witness? You say, well, Brother Danny, they're talking about us and just what's going to happen in our church. There ain't nothing going to happen in our church. We'll just stay right with God. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something, man. If what, was, if what was in here a while ago stays in here, they ain't got to worry in this world. But as long as Jesus passes by every now and then, and the glory of God moves in, I mean, it don't matter what the devil says. Hey, man. I mean, and, and don't, don't get mad. I'm a little, I mean, there's more people in our bathroom on Sunday morning than there are in some of these churches. I'm not, I, don't try, I don't mean that critical. I'm just saying, don't let the devil say a move bother you. Hey, Amen. You know what I was doing? You know what I was doing this week while I was getting talked about like a dog? They was running around putting up papers all over, all over the factory, bad mouth of me. You know what I was doing? Down there preaching to a crowd of young people, trying to get them to do something for God and live their life for God, just like I always do. Don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let me tell you something, buddy. This church right here is the best thing that's ever happened to McDowell County. You listen to me? I make no apologies for saying that. This church right here is the best thing that ever happened to this town. One of these days they'll realize that. Thank God when you look around and see the change live, the homes that have been put back together, the people sitting right here that were on drugs, got their life straightened out, and all that. It ain't no way the devil fights it. We're getting ready to have the biggest day in the history of this church, in the history of probably in this, this part of the country. Uh, what would you do if you was the devil? Wouldn't you fight it too? Of course you would. I still feel fine. Fine. You know what I've done down there this week? Let me tell you what I was doing. Well, he was, he said, well, wasn't you just trying to run around, trying to straighten out all this? No, I wasn't. I was down there preaching in Lincolnton. And let me tell you what. I've been, I'm out here trying to pay for all this mess. Somebody's got to. I told you. Last week, God blessed us. With that, um, what was I talking about last week? When I, oh, yeah, that carpet man. So this week, guess what happened? I was down there preaching. Preacher got up and said, Lord, laid it on my heart. He said, we're going to take up an offering every night in this revival, and we're giving it to New Man of Christian School. And he said, a business has told me, a businessman told me, that whatever we get, he'll match it. He said, whatever we take in, we'll get it. He said, somebody gives $100, he'll give $100. I said, glory to God, because I know our school needs it right now. There's a lot of people behind on their bills, and there's a lot of students that we're trying to help, and the school needs financial help. I mean, we're trying to keep tuition low, and we still got uh, people, who, you know, should be supporting people, and hadn't, maybe hadn't come through lately or something like that, and it needs it. I said, praise God. Preacher got up there. He said, now, whatever you give tonight, he said, this, this brother, this businessman's going to match it. I, I was sitting there thinking, huh, I'm going to give a $10,000 check. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I said, I'm going to give $10,000, then he'll match it, and then I'll just take it back home and tire my check up. <laughs> I said, reckon that'd be wrong to do that? I start, and then I thought, no, I'll get a bunch of our church members to come tomorrow night, make them all give a whole bunch of money. Come on, pay them back Sunday. <laughs> I said, no, that ain't right, that ain't right. Because I'm working, my mind is just working like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he said, up to $1,000, he'll match it. I just talked to him on the phone a while ago. He said, well, preacher, we got it. Got to $1,000, and he matched it. And that makes $2,000 that they're going to give our school. And somebody else told in 50, that's $2,050 that I drummed up this week while I was out there preaching for the school. So I think I ought to pay for myself. I don't think I ought to ever be a... a a liability on our church. I don't think, oh, well, we have to keep up and preach. I ought to be more responsible for more money coming in here than I'm getting. Amen? So the church will make money off of me. Amen? Amen. That's the way it ought to be. Money grab. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Just show you I love you. 
The Lord laid it on my heart, been dealing with my heart for our 20th anniversary. By the grace of God, I'm saving, working, planning. And here's what the Lord laid on my heart. I'll show you how much I love our church. Buddy. This church has been good to me. This church has been good to me. That's why I fight for it. It's like that. I am a believer in New Manor Baptist Church. I got confidence in this place. So I Lord laid on my heart for our twentieth anniversary. Me personally, not my tithes, out of my pocket that I'm saving up and working on and we'll get. Have got, we'll get, maybe, hope. I'm gonna give one dollar for every person we have in Sunday school on the big day. If we have two thousand, two thousand dollars. That's why all these people say, well, he's preaching, he's making all the money, and he wasn't this and that. The Lord done laid on my heart, and I've already given on the balcony. I'm going to give a dollar for every person we have in Sunday school to show our church I love it. 20th anniversary. Y'all been good to me. Y'all stuck by me when it wasn't easy to stick by a preacher. Buddy, I've had phone calls, and people believe in me, people ready to fight, everything. Man, I, I, y'all been good to me. And I want to be just as good or better to you. I'll be doing that, Lord. We, you say, what if we have $2,500? $2,500. What if we have 3000 Brother Bruce is going to let me borrow. <laughs> he doesn't say it. He'd let me borrow how much ever I needed. Hey, I encourage some other, most, more of you to do that. Say, I can't get, sell something. Sell something. Amen. Say car. <laughs> Boom on somebody. The church gets all the money for the car too. All the money because the church bought the car. All of it. Hallelujah. Amen. I still feel fine. I'm making it just fine physically. I ain't got a pain in my body. This old man still plugging along. <laughs> really? You know something? I got up Friday morning, went to bed late, 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 Friday, Thursday night. Late. So I've been preaching in Lincoln. I got up early Friday morning. Corey went with me on the trip. I come up here and run around all Friday morning getting youth choir tapes, checking on the work here. Drove four, 400 and something miles straight. Stopped and got here something to eat. Got in there a little before church time. Prayed and got my thoughts together and, and rested for just about 15 minutes. Took a shower. Went on to church, screamed and hollered and preached and jumped around for I don't know how long that night. Went back, went out, took Corey out to Taco Bell. And we went out to Taco Bell and stayed a little while. Went back to the motel. And at 20 to 1, I was wide awake, ready to do anything. So I ain't got no complaints, man. You say, how in the world men drive 400 miles and, you know, preach an hour like working eight hours? If you don't believe it, get out in your yard and scream for one hour. I dare you. Go out in your yard. They'll think you're seeing things. <laughs> Get out in your yard and get out there and go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and count to a hundred thousand. You'd be like this for you go through. It'll wear you out. You say, how do you drive 400 miles and step all day? And then why? I was just like this at one o'clock. I wanted to do something so bad. Go somewhere. Do something. You say, how in the world do you do that? I'm taking my vitamins, bless God. <laughs> Amen. Son, Thomas, and Dina over there, they've got the miracle stuff. If you don't believe it, you see them after the service. They'll fix you up with some stuff. It'll get you going, man. I ain't kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I felt good before I took it. But them is, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I really, I felt just like, I can't, I don't know if I feel any better or not, but I don't feel bad. And I sure got all the energy I want. And sure can do anything I want. God has been good to me. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right there. Good night. We're going to have to hurry up and get up there and have church after church. Okay? All right. Let's uh, sing a verse of I Love Him. Let's stand and sing tonight. You can get copies of this tape if you want it.